Yo, welcome back to the Three Volume Rule Manga Podcast, where I, your host, Saga Manga, read three volumes of a new manga every month, and we do a chapter by chapter breakdown. And then I give you my thoughts after each volume and at the end whether I'm going to continue it, yada yada. And today we're reading Gantz. Gantz is a pretty popular manga. I read scans on my iPad because I ain't buying Gantz. And there's like, I mean, I can't show a lot of pictures, but maybe I'll follow along on my iPad maybe when I'm talking. And usually, I usually, in the beginning of the episodes, at least the last two, I kind of like just talked about what I'm reading and whatnot. But we're going to do that at the end. So we're going to get right in to Gantz. Volume 1, Chapter 1. And the story starts out with our main character, Kay Carano. And he's looking at like a bikini magazine. And he's while he's waiting for the in the subway. And an old lady approaches him, asks him about if she can get to a certain destination from this line. And instead of just answering correctly, he just says, yes, you can. Even though she can't. And because to him, it's too much of a pain in the ass to explain everything like why not just say no a man stands beside him and he realizes that it's one of his friends from elementary school when a passenger falls onto the train tracks and our main character is saying that in his head nobody's gonna go down there to help him because this guy's plastered and he says if this situation just stays like this he'll get to see a guy get splattered to pieces what the is this guy like not good in the head (laughs) then his elementary school friend jumps down onto the track to save the guy and nobody seems to be helping him and they happen to lock eyes our main character K ends up climbing down onto the tracks to help his friend and this guy that's drunk that fell on the tracks. As they get the guy back up onto the top of the tracks, the train is entering the station. So K and Masaru Kato, which is his friend's name, they start running down the track to try and get away from the train. And then somebody yells, it's a non-stop train, you idiots. So the train was never going to stop. And then the train hits both of them at the same time, decapitating them and their heads go flying. But in the next panel, you see them both in a room like they were transported to this room. And I wrote, is this an isekai, bro? (laughs) So Kay and Kato are in this room with a bunch of people surrounding a giant black sphere and back at the train station there's no blood and the witnesses saying that they saw the two teenage boys get hit by the train but their bodies weren't there so i don't know what's going on right so there's a bunch of men in the room and with the orb so it seems like you have to die to get transported to this room. And that is chapter one. So chapter two. K and Kato both realized that they were about to die, but then they got transported to this area. One of the people room room, they say, uh, this is heaven. <laughs> we have all died, which is just one hypothesis. So is this like an after world situation? Like, is this heaven or hell or something? But then they look out the window and they see Tokyo Tower. So they're still in Japan. But the door to the balcony won't open. And they can't even touch the latch to open the glass door. And apparently none of the people in the room can touch the walls or the doors. The man in the glasses who first talked to Kay when they reached the room says, 
let's introduce ourselves how old how he died and he says his name is Masashi Yamada and he was in an accident on a scooter as they're talking about their past and whatnot two feet appear on the ground and then they start growing from the feet up and then arms appear out of nowhere and they're what seems to be beams of light coming from the orb like the black sphere in the middle of the room and everybody else in the room is excited because it's like a new person joining them and it turns out to be a girl and we know this because she's completely nude and <laughs> she like appears right in front of k chapter three after this girl's body fully appears she's leaning against k and it looks like he kisses her or grabs her i'm not to totally sure what happened but he's definitely like hugging her at the least and kato notices that there's like blood on her wrists so she probably commit suicide in the bath because she's naked and wet one of the guys in the room who is an ex yakuza just grabs her and brings her to the back room starts to undo his buckle and belt which means he's gonna you know what he's gonna try and you know i'm not gonna say the word <laughs> so kato goes into the back and breaks it up because he doesn't want to see that chapter four as kato's breaking up the fight there's a voice coming from the black sphere and on the orb there's writing which says your lives have ended how you use your new lives is entirely up to me then the black sphere says you schmucks will go out and defeat this per person which is an onion alien you know it's so far pretty weird then the black sphere opens and the two sides i guess <laughs> slide out and there's a bunch of firearms like rifles and there's actually a person inside hooked up it looks like kind of like the matrix cable and stuff is all hooked up to his body there's also what looks like uh suitcases with each person's name on them and inside the suitcase contains an outfit or like a suit kind of like a body armor suit and one of the people in the room He's running across the room and then the top half of his body starts disappearing, kind of like dematerializing until it's just his legs. I wonder if I can quickly find a photo. Yeah. So he's like the dematerializing until it's just his legs and then he's gone and he rematerializes outside on the street. And the black sphere it says please wait 58 minutes so i i still don't know what's going on at this point chapter five everybody is slowly disappearing from their head downwards and rematerializing out in the world the only way i can explain is kind of like they're getting like 3d printed <laughs> kind of so our main character K quickly strips and gets into his suit before but before he can change he starts to disappear and he quickly grabs the suit which he's able to bring with him when he gets transported out onto the street or one of the people of the group says this feels like a game show where the prize is 10 million yen and the premise is that there's a criminal aliens living on earth and they've been scouted by a secret government agency to go beat the aliens and k is questioning if this is really a tv show and that they were not about to die and this kid he says have you ever been hypnotized you were all scouted around town and do you remember talking to someone before you came to the apartment and Kay thinks back and the only person he talked to before he died was the old grandma at the very beginning 
So the group starts going, running around town to try to locate this onion alien. And one of them ends up finding it at like an apartment. Chapter six. After they catch this alien, it keeps just saying onions are enough for me. And then it says two is enough for me. And then it starts spitting like nasty. I don't know. It's kind of just like saliva spitting on the people and the blonde haired girl points her gun at him, which is kind of like an x-ray gun because she points at him and there's a screen on the gun and it shows the x-ray. And she realizes that its skeleton is in the shape of its weird head. It's not like a norm. They thought it was a mask at first. So, but they still assume it's a TV show. So one of these Yakuza guys, there's two of them. He's saying, stop the camera. And then the onion alien breaks away and starts running away from all of them and jumps off the second floor balcony and lands head first in front of K and Kato. The alien's bleeding and it keeps saying onions are enough for me. And the group is continuing to chase the alien down the street. There's not too much that's going on for me to speak so far like it's kind of just weird chapter seven the old man from the group who spoke first about the hypothesis of like it being heaven he's walking by himself and he's hearing like a ringing noise and it starts to zoom in onto his head and it looks like we can see his brain and there's almost like like a target or a like a tracking device or something on his head and then his, his head just explodes I'm not sure what that's about back to the main group uh chasing the onion alien kato runs away from k and the girl to join the group which the girl from the group who did not give her name which is we're just gonna call her blonde girl corners the alien and he tries to shoot at him but misses and the wall behind the alien explodes the group now has the alien surrounded and the alien is making some sort of whistling noise and you can see blades come out of its fingers and he flashes at the yakuza guy and at this point all of them aim their pistols at him and are about to shoot him when kato yells stop chapter eight so it looks like these pistols have some sort of delay because nothing happens after all of them pull the trigger and as they're talking the alien's arm gets blown off and then his other arm gets blown off and both his legs get blown off until he's just lying on the floor dead kato says we need to call an ambulance and i don't know why you shot that guy and then the accuser or the akuza guy he uh leans down and shoots the alien in the head and a few seconds later head explodes so the blonde girl she is saying that that was not a human it was an alien because the x-ray gun showed his the onion alien skeleton was not it was not a human skeleton chapter nine the group is now arguing whether it's really a TV show or what's going on. And the Yakuza dude ends up lifting up the alien's body. And at this point, the woman realizes that some little girl on a balcony saw them blow up this alien. And this little girl says, Mama, the wall in front of Mr. Saito's house is all broken up. And then uh, Kato yells to her, he yells call the police and he says excuse me but it seems it seems like they cannot see our group of characters which must mean that they're really dead and out of nowhere at this point a fully grown onion alien looking ass dude <laughs> shows up and then he squares up straight in the face of the Yakuza guy. Chapter 10. 
K is walking with the the girl that, that was nude. He's walking her home, and he decides to leave her while he's walking away because they're hearing this bright. And as he's walking away, he starts hearing this high-pitched sound, but the girl says that the sound is getting louder, so obviously this means it's probably like a boundary within the game show or what they think they're on where they can't go out of it or their head's going to explode like the old dude because that's where they started hearing the noise. So the half naked girl, she runs back to Kay screaming and they see that the old dude was dead on the floor with no head. So they decide to head back the way they came and the sound slowly gets quieter. Back to this onion alien squaring up with the Yakuza guy and he's screaming in his face. So the Yakuza man headbutts the onion alien, which seems to basically do no damage. And the other people end up aiming their pistols at the alien to shoot. And right as they're about to shoot, the alien grabs the Yakuza guy by the head and he holds it in front of them. And then you can see the blades coming out of his fingers, just like the the younger one. So he's holding this Yakuza guy by the head, cutting into his head with the blades. The alien starts to squeeze the head. And this is when the blonde 20-year-old girl screams, die, <laughs> aims her rifle at him and shoots. But the Yakuza guy swings, he swings the Yakuza's body in front of the barrel and his whole torso explodes. <laughs> So it looks like these guns are kind of like a ray gun, almost. And after a delay, whatever was in the path of the barrel just kind of explodes or disintegrates from the inside. And that is the end of volume one. And let's see what I wrote. Based on what I read here, super weird. I have no idea what's going on. But if I had just bought volume one, I probably would have stopped right here just because how weird a lot of the things was but there's a small part of me that kind of wants to know what's going on like where they are are they actually dead so let's head on to volume two volume two chapter 11 as the yakuza guy's body got blown up and he's hanging in the alien's grip the alien squeezes and explodes his head and at this point, pretty much everyone in the group starts shooting at the alien as he cuts off someone's arm, ends up killing all of them except Kato, which was, he wasn't actually with the group. And as he's walking towards Kato, about to swing on him, one member isn't actually dead and pulls out a real pistol and starts shooting at the alien. It turns out that the alien is not dead though, and he gets up. And he's facing Kato. That's basically all of chapter 11. Some of them, some of these chapters kind of like, not too much happens. There's not that much like a uh, text. So chapter 12, it's Masashi Yamada, the guy with the glasses. He's dreaming that it was actually a TV show, but then he wakes up and realizes he's got no arms. And he looks to his left and that's when he sees the alien and Kato face to face. The alien is yelling in his own language at Kato. And Kato is saying, like, I don't understand what you're saying. He says, I don't like killing. All that kind of stuff. And how he was trying to save the short alien. And he starts to cry. He doesn't know what to do. But he doesn't want to die. So he thinks about using the gun that he picked up, which is different from all of the pistols that everybody else had. So he aims the gun at the alien's face. And the alien swipes at him, which he dodges. And then points the gun point blank at the alien's face. But Kato's it's kind of like a softy, so he can't pull the trigger. He ends up lowering the weapon. And the alien swipes at him again and knocks him over a guardrail. And Kato rolls down this hill. Chapter 13. 
K and the nude girl. I really wish they just said their names off bat. They're walking down towards the aftermath of this fight with the alien, and they realize like all of the bodies on the floor is everybody from that room that they were in, and that this alien must have done that. So K is too scared to get any closer, even if it is a TV show or that guy is in a costume, which he's not, he's an alien. They start to back away and the alien turns around and Kay yells, run. So they start to run, They're running away from this alien. He turns the corner, looks back and realizes that the girl is gone and the alien must be chasing her. But the alien comes around the corner and Kay starts running again. See, chapter 14. So some of these chapters are kind of short with the notes. Chapter 14. As Kay is running away from the alien, the alien is yelling. Oh, no. As Kay is running away from the alien, he's yelling, Somebody call the police. But as we know, as the reader, nobody else can see them or hear them. And suddenly the alien gets hit by a car. And the guys driving the car get out. And they're, they're like, what the fuck is going on? Nobody's around. So they must not be able to see the alien either. And at this point, Kay goes up to them. He tells one of them he needs to use his cell phone. And the guy says, what the hell? Something's here in front of me because the guy bumped into Kay, but he can't see him. He says, there's something here like an invisible guy or something. Which means physically that their bodies are there, but they're not able to be seen or heard. So I, st again, have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> and as Kay starts to running away again from the alien... He's thinking back to his childhood with Kato and how Kato always used to say he was cool and he was not afraid of anything. But then he runs into a dead end. And instead of cowering in the corner, he decides to rush directly at the alien and he slides through his legs. And at the end of this chapter, we see Kato lying at the bottom of the hill and he looks up and he sees Kay running, being chased by the alien chapter 15 the chase scene is continuing k is thinking back to when he was a kid how he used to run and he's thinking about kato and he actually is crying thinking that he's dead and then he sees these stairs and he remembers how when he was a kid he used to jump down full sets of stairs when he was younger so that's what he plans to do and we see this suit that he's wearing almost like it's forming like an exoskeleton or muscles on the outside and he goes to jump down the flight of stairs but he ends up jumping down what looks like like a 50 stair set so what i'm thinking right now is the suit is powering up because he's like running around and using it it's kind of like power armor hey lands rolls without breaking any bones so obviously the suit is like power armor. The alien jumps down the stairs and lands right above K. He puts his hands around his neck and then Kato comes running around the corner, gets him in like a like a rear naked choke. And he tells K to run. But the alien uses his claws that like come out of his fingers to cut Kato's arms, which Obviously, he releases the hold on the alien. Chapter 16. Even though Kato's arm is bleeding and broken, he's still telling K to run. And the alien ends up grabbing Kato by the shirt, lifts him up. He's about to kill him like with the claws. But K stands up, rushes the alien. The alien blocks the attack with his right hand. And then he grabs both of the alien's wrists. And at this point, his suit looks like it's fully powered up. And while Kato's on the ground, he says, I knew K-Chan kicks ass. 
And here, while Kay is grabbing both of the onion aliens' wrists, he's squeezing. And hard enough that it looks like he breaks the aliens' wrists. Chapter 17. Here it shows that it's obvious that the alien's wrist is broken. Because it's hanging at like a weird-ass angle. So the alien reaches out with his other arm, grabs K by the face. But K punches the alien in the stomach and punches him in the face. And he starts to beat down this alien, obviously powered up by the suit. And as the alien is getting his ass beat, it says, forgive me and I'll give you my onions. As there is a break in this fight, we see the same pistol that Kato had come out of what seems like thin air and shoots what looks like a rocket propelled bola like a net essentially which wraps around the alien and knocks itself to the ground so now that the alien is incapacitated we see a human basically come out of thin air as well and it's the young kid who is in the apartment and it's like he's like a middle schooler from grade eight okay right here grade eight and he tells k to shoot the alien with the gun that he has which is a gun that's going to explode the alien's body so obviously the weapons do different things because that kid just shot like a net and there's that x-ray gun but who knows chapter 18 the young kid is encouraging k to shoot the alien saying that he killed everybody but your friend over there k won't pull the trigger the young kid continues saying isn't that suit great you feel so strong and then he says it's fun looking at pictures of dead bodies i could tell from your eyes the moment i saw you in that room you're just like me and you want to see him die is this eighth grader just like insane <laughs> like k responds with fuck you i'm not like you you sicko this isn't a comic or a video game you little loser and then he walks away without killing the alien the young kid proceeds to point his gun at the alien and pulls the trigger and the alien starts to deconstruct from the head downwards just like how they appeared in the apartment and got reconstructed from the feet up then he says this gun is for sending and the one that k has is a gun for killing so he sent the alien somewhere this kid also says that um he knows more than everyone else and they need to get back to the room and then they are free and they can go back home they're not actually dead as long as you're alive when you return to the room you'll be back to normal at this point k is desperately trying to wake up kato but it looks like kato's dead and he's trying to revive him and at this point he is now being sent back to the room so as he's trying to revive him he starts deconstructing from the head down chapter 19. the young kid says you're pretty good it's been a long time since anyone else survived implying that this kid has been through this whole experience before next the dog reappears i forgot to mention there was a dog in the apartment another person and guess what it's the nude girl she asks where kato is and k cannot say anything because he knows he's dead then it shows kato lying in a pool of blood and his finger is twitching and then he starts to rematerialize in the apartment and the timer on the black orb hits zero. And it says, time to share the points. To which the young kid says, Gantz is going to start handing out points. So the black orb in the middle is called Gantz. Chapter 20. So right now it's confirmed that Gantz is the black orb, which is handing out points. The dog got zero points because he didn't do anything. Gantz says, too much tongue wagging, too much tail wagging, tits, which is the naked girl. 
also got zero points. Too much titty, too much wandering around without panties. Kato, zero points. Uh, he saw that he was always dying. Mr. Nishi, who is the kid, got three points. A total of 90 points. And once he gets 10 more points, you're done. So I guess 100 points and you can fully leave this Gantz thing. And K, zero points. Too many boners from staring at tits. <laughs> Mr. Nishi, we're just going to call him that from now on. He's the young kid. Mr. Nishi starts to walk away and he says that the door will now open. And they all want to ask him a bunch of questions like what's happening to us and what are they doing? Mr. Nishi says, I don't know. He only knows some of the specifics. He's just a normal middle schooler, but he's been coming here for an entire year. So he's been doing this shit for a year. It just keeps repeating itself over and over, just like tonight. Then he goes over to the cans. And he says, show them everybody who died. Oh, he goes over to Gantz and says, show them everybody who died. And he shoves his finger into the ear of the, the dude that's sitting inside the orb. A ton of people start showing up on the screen, including everybody from last night. Mr. Nishi tells Kay that he's not like the others and he could tell that the suit is important and that's why he survived. So maybe that's a kind of a hint that Kay, the main character, is going to survive, obviously. Chapter 21. So Kay was mad at Mr. Nishi because he didn't tell anybody about the suits. He didn't tell anybody because once the target lets its guard down, it's easier. Oh, well, it lets its guard down while it's killing the other contestants. So then therefore it's easier to capture or kill the target. Kato is furious and he grabs Nishi by the shirt. But Mr. Nishi grabs his arms and says, I could pick you up right now because I'm the strongest person in this room. K points his gun at Mr. Nishi's head and tells him to let go, but he also wants to ask him a bunch of questions. Mr. Nishi reveals that they're still alive, or rather they were saved right before they died and brought here. But that might not actually be the case, is his guess that uh, their original bodies are really dead, and the people who come here are like a fax, essentially a copy of the human. Chapter 22. Kei, Kato, and Tits leave the room through the door, which ends up locking behind them. And they've decided that it's time to go home. So they take a taxi home first to Tits' house. She gets dressed and comes back and gives the clothes back to Kay. Before they leave, they she says her name is Kei Kishimoto. We're just going to call her Kishimoto from now, or Tits. So uh, Kishimoto is back in her house. She goes upstairs to the bathtub, which is all bloody, because that's where she uh, commit suicide. And then her home phone starts to ring. It's her parents. They're saying they're at the hospital and they found Kay, your sister, in the bathtub. And she's alive. She just regained consciousness. Her mother on the phone says, this is Shiori, isn't it? Who the hell is this? At this point, Kishimoto's sister comes in the room, which I guess she is Shiori. And that's the end of volume two. Definitely interesting ending right there. I'm more interested now that we learned about the copies of the humans and the bodies. And it seems like the people who died, their body is actually in the real world. But when Kei and Kato got hit by the train, apparently there was no bodies, which is, again, weird. Don't really know what's going on. So we'll go to volume three. <laughs> Volume 3, Chapter 23. Uh, okay, he goes back to his normal day-to-day. -day. He's back at school. He's not going to tell anybody about what happened. 
the kid that he knows at school is getting extorted for money and this bully ends up turning on K for the money. So before the school ends, K ends up going to the bathroom and then he puts on the suit that he was wearing from last night. The bully is walking him towards like four other tough looking dudes. Chapter 24. K is surrounded by like five or six strong dudes and they're basically thugs school bullies i guess they say that they're gonna take all of his money and then the captain of a karate team approaches he tells these thugs that he wants all the money he took from the sophomore team member and the karate team member uh, leader he starts getting beat up by these guys what i guess is the leader of the gang says uh K needs to bring 100,000 yen tomorrow, which K says, I'm not bringing you anything. The leader starts to kick K in the shins, which seemingly doesn't hurt him at all. So he says again, I'm not paying you a single goddamn yen. He gra And then he grabs the leader's wrists, starts to squeeze, obviously empowered by the suit again. And the leader backs down and he lets him go. And then he walks away from these thugs. Chapter 25. K now thinks he's the strongest in the school because of the suit he wears. But after school, he's in the subway station where he died trying to recount what happened. When K ends up getting home, Kishimoto, aka Tits, she's waiting outside his room to return his student handbook, which was inside the clothes that he gave her. So... They go into his apartment, he gives her food, water, and clearly something is bothering her, but she never says. But as she's about to leave, she comes back to the door and she asks Kay to let her stay with him because she can't go home because her body was found. And of course Kay automatically lets her stay with him. Chapter 26. Kishimoto's in the shower and Kay is tripping out on his bed he thinks like am i gonna lose my virginity tonight <laughs> so Kay runs out goes to the store buys condoms when he gets home she's already out of the shower so he's just sitting there awkwardly like reading manga they go to bed and Kay just straight up says he wants to have sex kishimoto she says she doesn't want to and as they're like laying there talking about all of the scars on their body is gone. And this is when Kishimoto mentions she went home and there was another her. And she's asking, what is she? And in the morning, K he realizes that all of his burn scars are gone. So that means they got healed from the suit or maybe Gantz healed them after the game or the mission or whatever was finished. Chapter 27, a young kid in a school uniform, he's getting bullied. These guys are about to pull his pants down when Kay walks up to them. And he doesn't even say a single word. These guys just leave the kid alone. In the bathroom, all these bullies are talking about how they're going to hit this kid in the back of the head with a bat, strip off his clothes, and stick up his ass with the broom. Like, what the? Okay. One of the boys from that bathroom he goes to kato's classroom tells him after school the second and third year kids are gonna jump him and beat the shit out of him and one is a heavyweight pro boxer and he wants his asshole because he's gay or <laughs> okay so instead of waiting kato goes right to the bathroom where i guess these kids are hanging out at the bathroom for some reason he opens the stall door on the gay dude which is mid shit and he tackles him to the wall. Looks like his head bangs off the wall. And he just pleads for Kato to stop. And Kato says, if this guy is your strongest guy, you need to stop picking on the weak. Chapter 28. Kei and Kishimoto are outside of her house. And they see the other Kishimoto come out and walk past them. Kishimoto says... She's relieved that she doesn't have to live her life for her mother anymore because she was always studying. and So I guess because her mother wanted her 
to study like nonstop. Maybe that's why she uh, commits suicide. But it is super weird how there's like a double of her walking around, but not for K or Kato. We then see Kato at home getting reprimanded by his mother or guardian, not sure, for fighting at school. And the next page is the young kid, Mr. Nishi, is walking away from an alley where these kids say, what the hell is that? Is that a cat? It's all blown up. And we see Mr. Nishi with a gun in his hand. So this, this kid is actually like serial killer vibes just shot a cat in the in the alley for no reason and then he says i need something larger tonight and his ears are starting to ring kato k and kishimoto all freeze and they can't move and this is when they start to dematerialize from the head down and they're transported back to the apartment with gants chapter 29 this chapter starts with a biker gang and they beat up this dad with a kid and i think the leader named tet he uh goes home to his wife and his kid eating dinner she says she uh tet says he's gonna go out to the store and he ends up meeting with uh, up with a couple of his buddies which i guess are part of his like biker gang and then another huge group of bikers roll up on him and they start to beat their ass and they're fighting with like bats and Tet gets stabbed in the stomach as the other biker gang is driving away. You can see him start to de dematerialize from the head being transferred to the room. So then the last panels of this chapter in the Gantz apartment, there's four new people, including Tet. Chapter 30. So we are... Introduced to a new character near uh, his name is Hojo and there's a couple of girls following around the store because he's so hot and he's asked one of his friends to borrow his bike because the stalker girl is following him and outside the store he's getting on the bike and a different girl that he was with she asks if she can join him on the bike and he doesn't realize that it's the stalker girl who hopped on the bike, so he pulls out quick. And they're on the bike, flying down the highway. That's when he notices it's the stalker on the back. And they end up getting up into, like, backed up traffic. So they're sitting there waiting. And while they are waiting, you see a truck driver has fallen asleep at the wheel. And it looks like it's about to crash into the car behind Hojo. And in the car behind Hojo is a grandmother and her grandson. Which, in the next panel, all four of them are transferred to the Gantz apartment. In the apartment, the eight new players are freaking out. And that is when Tet starts to yell, Where the hell are we? I want explanations. Tet and a couple other guys from his gang approach Kishimoto. And this is when Kato says he will tell them just enough information so that they can get home alive mr nishi the young kid he says what are you what are you insane he doesn't want kato to tell him anything because we know his strategy is to let the let the alien attack the other players and then kill the alien but kato explains they're all going to take weapons from this orb and they're all going to be transported to another place which obviously all of these people don't believe him hojo says what is this like a tv show this is where kato explains no it's not a tv show and you have to go and capture the alien which everybody laughs at him and his response is last time the new people also laughed and now they're all dead the orb Gantz starts to talk to them and shows them their new target is Tanaka alien. And then he proceeds to open up, shows them all their weaponry and the guns and the suits. And this is where Kato says, whether you guys listen to me or not, these suits are the difference between life and death. Chapter 32, 
Kay realizes that his suit is not in the little suitcase because he left his bodysuit in his own apartment. Kato tells everybody to go put on their suits and change. And this is where uh, Kishimoto's changing. And Tet starts to spy on her because he... Tits. Tits. They want to see your tits. Come on. They start to spy on her and the dog runs around the corner and starts to lick her pussy again. This happened before and I never mentioned it. The dog's lick, licking her. <laughs> yeah. Kind of cringe. Tet is freaking out because... Or no... K, I think, is freaking out because everybody's wearing a suit except for him. But two of the guys of the biker gang were not wearing a suit. So he tries to steal one of their suits. But Mr. Mr. Nishi says, don't bother. It's just a clothing if it's not your suit. So I guess each suit is specific to each person. It seems like Mr. Nishi knows some way for K to get his suit, but he refuses to tell him. And says, have fun dying. <laughs> One of the biker gang dudes, uh, he's aiming his gun at Mr. Nishi's head. And you can see the x-ray. And then he pulls the trigger. And if you remember from before, the blonde chick in like volume one, she pulled the trigger after the x-ray. And the wall behind exploded. Chapter 33. Mr. Nishi looks scared when they pull the trigger. Because, like I said... Took a few seconds before the onion alien exploded. And wide-eyed, Mr. Nishi pulls out his pistol, pistol, points it straight at the biker's head and shoots. And a few seconds later, his head explodes. Then Mr. Nishi, me, Mr. Nishi says, Listen to me, you idiots. Anyone who points a gun at me dies. Got it? You point a gun at me, you die. Get that into your tiny little brains. And Kato asks him, why are you fine when you were shot too? To which Mr. Nishi replies, I'm not answering any more of your questions. Chapter 34. Ted is freaking out, asking, where the hell did that kid go? So Kato explains that it's going to start teleporting us. And don't panic. Everyone will be teleported outside one by one. Because they just watched Mr. Nishi literally deconstruct head down. So now K is freaking out because he doesn't have his suit. He doesn't know he's, how he's going to survive without it. Kata tells him, K, don't worry. You're not going to die because it's his fault that K is there in the first place. This has been Kata's plan all along. He's putting K's life above his own. We all need a homie like Kato. K is then the next person transported outside and he his head is materializing in the middle of the road and we see a truck coming straight at him and the truck barely misses his head because he can't move while he's being materialized. And he's still being materialized in the middle of the street and he sees the Tanaka alien just walking down the street right there. So while he's being teleported, the rest of his body is feeling around the apartment looking for a gun and kishimoto quickly hands him a pistol which is the killing pistol and then he's fully transported to the street and he's standing face to face with the tanaka alien that is the end of volume three i wrote some notes here at the end interesting premise decent amount of mystery we don't really know what's going on with the game yet. I actually don't even know if it is a game. We don't know why Kishimoto has a separate body when nobody else does. We also don't know why Mr. Nishi knows so much, but he won't tell anybody about anything. So I'm intrigued, but I personally didn't like a lot of the things that I was reading. Well, I like half and half there's a lot of weird shit like that dog for some reason and i don't think i'll continue with gants maybe like in the far future if i don't have anything i want to read i might continue but for
for now it's definitely getting put on hold i'm not i don't think i'm gonna completely drop it because there's like i said there's a mystery here so it'd be interesting to continue but honestly like i'd probably give it like six out of ten i guess cool kind of kind of cringe in certain points interesting but i don't know not super my what i want to read right now plus i have a lot to read so that's why it's getting put if i had nothing to read i'd probably continue but you know six out of ten not the best score but that's still like decent but that's only three volumes and i think there's like 37 so we have no idea where it's gonna go but yes for sure it's getting put on hold because you know i gotta read something else for next month and i have my own shit that i read off podcast but i think i think next month we'll do trigun because my deluxe just shipped out like yesterday so i'll probably have the trigun deluxe we'll just do trigun i know it's technically only like two volumes but i think it's still like 600 pages which is the equivalent of three volumes so we're bending the rule a little bit but we're gonna read trigun for the next podcast and that was a podcast we'll quickly what time we at 58 minutes we gotta do a little bit of editing um what have i been reading i've been reading first two podcasts we had 20th century boys i'm more than halfway in that promise neverland i'm pretty much i'm at volume nine so almost halfway through 20 or promise neverland we're caught up on jjk physical releases i'm i'm debating if i want to keep jjk we're caught up on blue exorcist now we're three or four volumes from the end of magi slowly reading uh full metal alchemist whenever i get the chance what i get oh yeah uh vagabond we have four volumes left every once in a while just pick that up and i'll read like a full volume straight through love vagabond the art's so good and then yo anime just hunter hunter bro i'm like 60 episodes in hunter hunter really dope they're in the we're in the greed island arc i don't know if that's even like the actual name but super cool shit happening in hunter hunter that's a good anime other than that you know not really too much going on we'll just do a shout out to some music if you guys like you guys like rock right now my favorite band right now is sundara karma i don't know if i shout them out last but that's s-u-n-d-a-r-a karma that's right now my favorite band also shout out to winterborn pretty good i just found them like a week ago i like their style basically when i find shit on spotify i'll just like take the entire discography of an artist and i'll just throw it in a playlist and then i'll just listen to it and then eventually i'm like if i keep it or not you know that's pretty much all i've been doing recently a lot of uh a lot of gaming because hunt showdown my favorite game of all time just got a huge update so that's what i've been doing for most of the time i got an update on the 15th so i've been straight up just playing that like every single day but that's the end of the podcast you know decent gas was decent i'm gonna put her on hold maybe we might never pick it up again we might pick it up again you know you can just watch this podcast to get a refresher in my brain even so thanks for hanging out i'm gonna go edit this shit up and stay tuned next month we'll have trigun peace